Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think we've got a junket coming up on Harriet's, don't we? Yeah, it'll be a little bit later in June, I yeah, think. Yeah, I think June so. June or July. Yeah. There are so many junkets I can't keep up with. <laughs> Brendan, it's nice to welcome you back to Dallas because I remember so clearly and with pleasure the interview we had when you were here for School Ties. Thank you. Now, we have with honors, I must tell you I enjoyed it very much, very good film. Thank you. Different uh, in some respects and yet there is because of Joe Pesci's character, the homeless character, there's just a little bit of the Fisher King in it to me. I don't know. Uh, is that uh, does that bother you? That comparison or that statement? I think they're two completely different stories, to tell you the truth. And you don't see any uh, any similarities. Um, if there are, personally, I think I I would be reaching for it to try and make those because in uh, either of those films. Um, there were different lessons to be told, I suppose. This one isn't about a homeless man. It's not what's central at the, at, at the heart of this film. It's about, I'd say, fathers and sons. It's about reconciled love. It's about the lessons that we learn outside of the classroom as opposed to the ones that are taught to us in a classroom. No, they're two completely separate films. What did you learn from this as far as setting career goals? Well, I, I have had ambitions in my life personally and have felt the need to obtain goals that I've set for myself. Um, certainly Monty is the same way. He um, is practically, he's like a train, he's on rails. When we meet him, he's running. That's at the beginning of the film, he practically knocks a woman over who's going through a garbage can. He has such blinders on to what's around him. And he wears such armor that his friends remind him, or chide him, as having been a good guy once, someone you could have fun with. But lately, he won't eat with them. He's emotionally vacant. The only thing he can think of is this obsession he has with writing this document that he thinks will make the world a better place. There's many reasons behind the reason why he's actually going to such uh, intense lengths to complete this thesis, which is actually stated pretty clearly when he goes to his advisor as the poor should be poor and the rich should be rich and the two should have nothing to do with each other. And of course, it's uh, no great coincidence as far as the story goes that when that very document winds up in the lap of the person he's been writing about who suddenly becomes his new mentor under duress <laughs> I add um, that that most important lesson is driven home and he is unable to uh, not confront that which uh, he's been uh, been been uh, been writing about and 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 hedging on as far as his 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 understanding of what it is to receive an education. In your own life, have you ever been like Monty? As I said, I felt like extreme ambition. I wanted to obtain goals, and and, and nothing would get in my way, or so I told myself. And I never really stopped to smell of flowers along the way. Or, um, but thankfully, I have a network of friends who are. <laughs> who are there for me, whether I need them or not, thanks guys, who will be letting me know when uh, things get to be a bit too much for me, slow down a bit. But I have felt uh, the pressures of academic achievement, and I've, I've certainly put those on myself when I was a student, and I have felt as if I had unobtainable goals um, to obtain, and uh, I can empathize with the person in that way. Where did you go to college? I went to, Upper Can I went to Upper Canada College, which was actually a high school in Toronto. And after that, I, went, I studied at the uh, Cornish College of the Arts in Seattle in a four-year uh, conservatory actor's training program and received a BFA in 1990. 1990. And uh, that was my formal education. So you had to be very, very focused then. 
Um, as a student? Yes. Um, at first, yeah. I, my high school and college education were antithetical of each other. In high school, to me, I, I went to the Harvard of high schools in Canada. And, uh, and many of, uh, of that, that, that world that, that was created in the film School Ties was one that was familiar to me, had, having gone to that, that school. And my college education was quite the opposite. There were burns on the carpets, the pipes were exposed, we were all starving. We, I was parking cars at night and, and sloshing my way through uh, scene study with Greek text by day. It was, it was a, a wonderfully engrossing experience. And uh, I didn't walk away from it feeling as if I knew everything all of a sudden, because I certainly didn't. Just as Monty Kessler in the film With Honors feels that if he writes this paper, then he'll know everything there is to know, and he'll be able to get into government, or so he aspires to, and he'll be able to help people. But Simon teaches him that's just not the way it is, kid. What did you learn working with Joe Pesci? Joe is a very um, instinctive actor. He's a very private actor. He makes use of his immediate circumstances in his personal life and brings them to the characters that he plays on screen. He, his past is, from what I understand of him, I mean, I may, I, I'm not sure. I may have been living with uh, Simon Wilder, living and working with Simon Wilder and not Joe Pesci. I mean, maybe I really don't know who Joe Pesci is, but the indication that I got from the guy who was there with us in the cold and everything for the four months, five months that it took to make this movie, is that he's a pretty good guy. He's got his feet on the ground, and he makes, uh, he makes a hell of a pasta fazool. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good man. Uh, Brendan, thank you for your time today. I know you're on a real tight schedule. You're welcome. But uh, again, congratulations on With Honors, and thank I you. hope it does really well for all of you. Thank you very and much. And congratulations on your performance. Thank you so much, Ron. I came kind to of college and it, I didn't make very good marks there. I got about probably about 65 average all the way through, albeit the the uh, curriculum was more accelerated than I think American high school standards mm -hmm. were, and that's part of the reason why I was in more it, like on the British system. I'd say yeah, it was a much more, it was it was it was modeled after the British system mm -hmm. of, of um, <laughs> tutorship, I guess. Now um, it was it was a far more vigorous and, and academically challenging environment. But, it, you know, it was, it was an all-encompassing, um, we were, we were, you know, we were pretty much taught to be well-rounded boys, mm -hmm. good on the fields and good in the classrooms, mm -hmm. level-headed young men with, you know, high aspirations. Gentlemen. Gentlemen. Yes. But the equation pretty much just added up to don't get caught. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah. Lessons we learned from you. Know. How uh, much in oh, one shot of you talking, but, but I need your hand. Oh, sorry. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what would be the enrollment of that school like? Uh, anywhere from five to seven hundred students. Oh. Oh. Five, six hundred students. It was kept really small. Uh -huh. It was very well endowed, but that's just the way it was. And then. Your father had gone there? Or? No, he didn't. He, he went to a similar college, but. I went always to private schools until mm -hmm. I went to college. Mm -hmm. And then I went to the state university. But um, I, uh, you know, I, I don't have children. But if I had children, I would want them to go uh -huh. I think, to, to private schools yeah. if I could afford it. Yeah. And I'd find a way. Find a way. I mean, yeah. I, I, it, it was uh, always a challenge, just pretty much for everyone. And, and it's just fluff, or just actors, or uh -huh. just entertainers. And that's fine. That's exactly what they are. But people, I learned later on, require those uh, storytellers in society. We need actors. Like them, hate them, whatever. <laughs> we still need them. And they always were there and they always will be there. They were persecuted in the dark ages and <laughs> made to perform on the steps and everything like that. I mean, like it or not, they'll, they'll still remain. So I figured I might as well, if I'm going to be one, I should know what I'm going to do. So I trained and I went into a school and I, and I, I got all this, as much information as I could. And try not to approach it intellectually because that stuff's boring anyway. Who cares about intellect as far as you know acting work goes? But. As a result, I walked away from it thinking, it was kind of like a trip to the salad bar. I just pretty much walked away with what I wanted anyway, and mm -hmm. that's largely the same thing that happens with Monty in this movie. What is your, what kind of a role do you have in Airheads? 
Oh, I play a, 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 a rock musician. Do you? In a band, yeah, with uh, three guys. I work with Adam Sandler and Steve Buscemi and Joe Montana and Michael Richards, Chris Farley, Michael McKeon, Michael Richards. Michael Lehman directed it. <laughs> 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 